let's talk about the ending of Imeneko here, folks. I am bringing you today a small, small, small video with some small thoughts about about Yumineko after finishing it. I wrote down some interesting stuff on my no notepad right over here. Some thoughts that I concocted myself and some thoughts that you guys shared in like in the comment section and on Discord and uh, I decided to do this as well. So yeah, let's get to it. First off, Toya. He is the one who gave birth to the episodes of Bimineko, like alongside Hachijo. It's not just Hachijo who was uh, the one who wrote all these episodes. Like both Hachijo and uh, Toya together created the episodes. Like the meta world and discussions alongside each passing episode, they are like an analogy to his, like to Toya's search through his past memories and what happened on Okinjima. That with each passing episode, Toya gains more and more of his memory and gains more understanding of Beatrice the same way Balor does in the story. And, you know, there is some evidence for it as well. Like, for example, when you think about the Balor's incompetency, which uh, in in certain way you also see it as something funny, but it makes you think, why was Meta Balor considered incompetent if he was an avid mystery reader. Because while Toya and Hajijo wrote the episodes, Meta Beller being incompetent is basically foreshadowing Toya's lost memories as a avid reader, despite the original Beller who should have done better. And another piece of evidence is that Peace Beller sometimes seemed to understand things the player slash Meta Beller did. By that I mean that uh, Peace Beller in episodes 1 and 2, they are a product of Beatrice's knowledge of Beller being a good avid reader of mystery. While the rest of the Bellers, they are Toya's product of the struggle for understanding. Yeah, ever since uh, the beginning of episode 3, that is the beginning of Beller going on that path of understanding. Whereas for the first two episodes, Bellers, the Bellers, they are a little bit different when you think about it. I guess another small moment that I want to add right over here when it comes to Toya's discussion with uh, future Angie is that the place we escaped to was turned into I got away on a motorboat. So that could very well be a, like a purposeful hiding the truth to protect the moment. So, looking back at this stuff, the first two episodes, they were written by Beatrice. And, well, there was no Evatrice in those two episodes, in those two first episodes. The first episodes, they were written by Beatrice not knowing that Eva would be the survivor. The third episode, written by Hachijo slash Toya, has Evatrice knowing that, well, she is a survivor and the new Golden Witch. Here are some notes about Angie not being in the first two episodes. Basically, Beatrice would have no clue that Angie does not come to the family conference when writing the first episodes. That is because it can be possible that the fight between Maria and Angie and Angie's exile from Maria Saucier made it so that Beato would no longer allow her in the Golden Land. Thus, she is not included in the story. That end, maybe Maria asked her to. That if Maria and Angie were gonna meet again at the family conference, it would definitely not be a peaceful one. So maybe through a servant, like, I don't know, like Genji, he asked Kiria to not bring Angie this year for the kid's consideration. And so Kiria made the excuse of her being sick to not bring her. Also, here is something uh, really... Uh, nice that I found from you guys right over here. So, you know, Angie's humble beginnings as a writer that was talked about in like the true ending, it is actually a parallel to Ryokishi, who started selling his first episode of Higurashi at Kamiket. And so, like 20 copies, some given for free if customers were promised to give feedback. Angie started small and became successful over time through slow growth, like in similar fashion to Ryukishi did, like with his new episodes, like each, like each comic cat. Okay, here's a little fun uh, detail right over here when it comes to 
Beller and Angie's connection to Ben Castell and Lambda Delta. Angie's belief has led to resurrecting her brother, like in the climax. She believed that her brother was still alive, which created miracle. Beller fought his hardest to remember and uh, come back home to his family in the Golden Land with determination that created certainty. Which is a pretty nice little thing right over here. When it comes to uh, the trick ending right over here, uh, like uh, somebody did mention this, that, well, Amakusa did sincerely try to convince Angie to not go to Rokenjima and let it all go. Like, you know, back in episode 4 when Amakusa was talking to Angie on the boat about self-satisfaction. And, well, sadly, it would seem that Amakusa didn't go further with it enough to stop her. Okay, so here is a big, big theory that you guys mentioned. That some people in the past have uh, talked about this, theorized that this could be the case, and... It would be pretty huge. It is a pretty huge theory right over here that Hachijoi Kuko is Yasu. And there is some evidence right over here that I've noted. Federer's memory device being damaged is a magical interpretation for Yasu suffering, like a similar fate to Beller, when they both drowned. That would be one evidence. Another evidence is that Federer is wealthy. She is a mystery novel enthusiast and developed a strong connection with Toya, similar to Beatrice. Beatrice, she died on October 6th, as it was shown at the end of episode 8, and started living as a cuckoo. She is from a rich family, but said that she was estranged slash exiled. Sayo could have prepared all this beforehand. She finds Beller after he suffered an accident, and instead of sending him to the hospital, she brings him to her home and makes him live there for years. And the final piece of evidence, the name Ikuko can be read as One Nine Child, the child from 19 years ago. This is actually pretty huge, I mean, do I believe that? Hmm, you know, we had the whole thing with uh, believing in miracles and believing in um, Beller being alive. That was Angie's whole thing, that she wanted to believe in the miracle that her family might still be alive there somewhere. And, you know, it ended up, it ended up being true. So in similar fashion, that is what the viewers want to believe. Like, to believe in the miracle that Beatrice herself, uh, Yasu, survived as well. And thus, uh, you would have like a happy ending where, you know, Beller and uh, Beatrice will live together for the rest of their lives in isolation and have like a happy ending. That is what uh, uh, the people who want to believe in this theory really crave for. They are craving for that uh, happy ending. So, can I deny such a possibility? Of course not. But something tells me that I, I'd have to do a little bit of research myself in order to see if I really want to believe that. Should we let things go the way they are? Uh, that's something that I'm gonna think about some more in the future. Okay, so here are some fun little details about Lambda Delta and Ben Castell that I wrote here. One of which is that Lambda Delta has super gravity because gravity is a fundamental certain force. That is a lovely detail right over here. I, I want to thank uh, the person who wrote that about, about Ben Castell's super gravity power right over there. That's, uh, that's a nice little detail. And uh, this one right over here... Uh, this is an interesting one, especially because I've uh, finished the first chapter of Higurashi recently. It is that uh, Lambda Delta references uh, the cake split in episode 8, like the Halloween party when Bergastel arrives. And it is actually a reference to the cake trick in Higurashi, which I think, uh, like I wrote, uh, yeah, it says that it is shown in season 1, episode 5 of Higurashi, if you, want, you guys want to check that out. It is the cake trick that Satoko was fooled by. And, you know, at that point, Ben Castell called Lambda Delta out that she was tricked by it in the past. 
it is a nice little reference. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Like I said, it, I, this video was gonna be a small one with some small details that I wrote down on Notepad for right now. And, uh, you know, like, this is interesting right over here with uh, the whole Toya and Hachijo were the ones who wrote uh, the episodes and their own perspectives like especially Toya's perspective being uh, analyzed through the meta discussions that we've uh, we went through so much like in the earlier episodes like that is going to be interesting the next uh, video that I want to work on when it comes to Yumineko it is going to be a big one and that one is going to be about Erika and I'm going to reference um, this whole Toya's perspective through the episodes type thing, which is going to be pretty interesting. And uh, there are some stuff about Erika that I really want to talk about. And I think it's going to be a, like a huge video in my eyes, that's for sure. There's going to be like a lot of stuff to talk about when it comes to Erika. It is going to be... Yeah, it's actually going to be like an investigation video because there are some weird things going on with Erika and her fall off the boat that I really want to talk about. And there's a lot of stuff that I concocted about that. Like, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to be working on that Erika video for the next months or so, and we shall see what, uh, what will turn out of that. Yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting one, so stay tuned for that. With that being said, folks, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe. I also have a coffee page that you can donate so that we can get to see some awesome stuff in the future. Alright, bye!